a life, a mind, a man devoted to Technion. Sometimes he worked half night. Sometimes he works on uh, Saturday mornings. In the beginning, it was very difficult. I, when the children were small, I, I was looking at other families going to the beach with their fathers coming around, and and I felt a kind of um, lonely. When I was little, I used to envy them. The, the, my friends walked in the park with his, their fathers hand by hand. And my father, I never saw him at this time of the day. Four o'clock, I never saw him, only from eight o'clock in the evening. I felt that I carried a responsibility being a faculty member, a professor at the Technion. I felt a responsibility towards the society in which I live. I think he gave much of his life to the safety of this country and we gave up much of our uh, life to him so he could do that. Yitzhak Hidron was a distinguished faculty member of the Technion Israel Institute of Technology, a research and teaching institution like no other in the world. Energized by hundreds of brilliant scientists and teachers like Professor Kidron, Technion has played a crucial role in the emergence of the modern state of Israel and is playing an even more vital role in preparing the nation for the increasingly technological world of the future, training three of every four scientists and engineers in Israel and adding 1,200 to the economy each year. Technion teams have shown the way in many areas of modern science and technology. <laughs> Professor Kidron's concentration was in the field of microelectronics. Microelectronics is essentially the field in which the whole electronic apparatus is disappearing into uh, something which we would call a tiny silicon-made chip, or, or uh, which is produced in a mass fashion, actually, and which contains somewhere between 100,000 and a million electronic components interconnected in a fashion that eventually leads us to generate a certain given electronic function. The reliability of, of such components, including up to, as I said before, a million elements interconnected in a certain fashion, is extremely high. Now, um, it has become essential for the Israeli industry to become somehow involved in all these things. And not just in order to uh, build very complex things like the Lavi fighter or something like this, but all our machines, all our tools, um, all our computer-aided design facilities, they all somehow revolve around microelectronics components. The Israeli um, awareness resulted uh, in two things. One, uh, within the universities, and I would say that the Technion was the prime mover in that particular field, uh, we provided a training, education of um, electrical engineers, mainly at that stage, electronic engineers, who were um, qualified to deal with problems in microelectronics, both in the technology as well as the design of integrated circuits at that stage. There have been many roads leading Technion's outstanding faculty members to the campus in Haifa. Yitzhak Kidron's was through Belgium and the Holocaust. I was born in Belgium in uh, 1932. Uh, to a, a very orthodox Jewish family that had settled in Belgium immediately after World War I. Trying to remember that period that until 1942 there was very little persecution of Jews as such. 
I went back to school. Uh, we had to wear the uh, Jewish Magen David. And I remember the period when I went to school. I, as a child, was not really aware of the blasphemy that was involved in, in, in carrying and wearing such a sign that designated us as Jews rather than ordinary people. But in the mid-1942, uh, real persecution of the Jews began by assembling them and sending them to concentration camps. And I was extremely lucky in uh, that I was, by sheer luck, saved. And if I'm here to this day, I owe it to a Belgian family in the French-speaking part of Belgium, very close to the French border, who actually saved me. Again, I know my mother perished in Auschwitz in the concentration camp. By 1942, I was separated from my mother, and I came to a tiny village in Belgium, Agimont, and I was hidden there by an extremely poor Christian, Catholic family. Eventually, they thought that I needed education and put me up in a place which was a Catholic school, essentially a convent of some, of some sort. And I was there. It turned out after the war, we were three Jewish children amongst about a thousand Catholic young children. And we went to school for about two years. We had all sorts of experiences until 1944, when the Americans eventually had landed and eventually freed us from the Germans. I reached Palestine in September 1945. In Palestine, Yom Kidron joined a proud people demanding freedom from British rule. Experienced the excitement of building a new nation and of life on a kibbutz. Entered the army at 16 by pretending to be older. and was wounded defending his kibbutz. At the age of 19, having served three and a half years in the army, I left it and started studying electronic engineering or electrical engineering at Technion, in which I am a faculty member now. Over a period of three and a half decades, as Yitzhak Kidron and hundreds of others like him were building brilliant careers as students, teachers, and research directors, Technion was becoming Israel's largest center of applied research, the site of two-thirds of all engineering research in the country, and an indispensable resource for government and industry contributing strongly to the stability and security of Israel's economy by helping to raise the quantity and quality of vital exports and impacting on every aspect of life and productivity in the Jewish state. Breakthroughs generated by Kidron and others in the labs and research centers have led to numerous social, scientific, and industrial advances. Technion has led the way in Israel and sometimes globally in such areas as solar energy, electronic farming, robotics, laser technology, and studies on sleep and aging. Very many graduates of the Technion indeed today um, uh, pr uh, play, I would say, major functions in those industries in Israel. Indeed, I would say almost all of the um, major U.S. companies involved in microelectronics have set up design centers, which um, 10 years later followed with wafer processing plans, and we've got one in Jerusalem and one 
in close proximity to Haifa, which process, as you know, VLSI, very large scale integrated circuits. Now, in addition to this, the local Israeli industry as such, which uh, in the electronics field very much evolves around military related either communications equipment, control, missile guidance and things like that. Of course the needs were quite clear and they set up such uh, design centers. Professor Kidron frequently visited his graduate students who were serving in key industrial posts to find out how they and more recent graduates joining them were doing. Presently in, in, in the position of manager or head of this operations here are you satisfied with the manpower? The whether is it sufficiently qualified? What would you expect of a Technion graduate? And, and what would your requirements be? Are they really available, freely available? Uh, I must say that we are extremely pleased with the material that we get from the Technion. You mean the graduates, not the, the material? Yes. <laughs> not the silicon? I, yeah, <laughs> I mean the graduates. Uh, the students that uh, come to us are very good in quantity and also in quality and we may select the best and uh, uh, Intel has a good reputation over here so uh, we really have a, a choice and uh, the people that come over here within a very short time they become productive and contribute and uh, uh, it works extremely well for us. Technion has many human and technical resources to offer Israel's growing industry and American and other foreign industrial firms based in Israel. It has also been a proving ground for high-tech industrial ventures, many of them initiated and tested on campus. There are now more than 150 high-tech companies in Israel established, staffed, managed, and made productive by Technion graduates in such fields as aeronautics, fiber optics, telecommunications, and sophisticated circuitry. This is an extremely dynamic, ever-changing industry, which requires also of the individual the ability to follow technological changes. It's a different kind of a person who studies this sort of engineering in comparison with other fields. Technion research and personnel have contributed significantly to the enhancement and modernization of computer programming and communications in Israel. Technion teams have also generated breakthroughs in an even more vital area of life enhancement, medical science. Here at El Sint, we, uh, we are in the business of diagnostic imaging. We design, manufacture, sell and service all our products in, in, under the worldwide market. We have our own operations uh, in the States, in Europe, with our salesmen, servicemen, to market and service this product. Uh, the product, when I say diagnostic imaging, are in the uh, uh, CAT scanners, nuclear medicine, ultrasound, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, and uh, conventional x-ray. Unfortunately, due to circumstances, and hopefully we will never have to make use of these things, we have to develop machines and instruments that the Minister of Defense requires which do not differ that much from uh, much uh, greater economies like the Western countries, take France, West Germany, Britain, and the United States. Here in Rafael, which is the Arm and Development Authority of Israel, the footprint of Professor Kidron in person and his team in development of new electro-optical, very advanced system can be seen in the last decade for sure, and even before this. Professor Kidron Talent had accumulated around him a vast group of young, talented people, which helped to push away the frontiers of both knowledge and engineering capabilities. And as a result, Raphael was capable to produce and develop 
a number of major electro-optical advanced systems. Technion's contributions to the military security of Israel were developed by men and women of peace, concerned not with force of arms, but with the power of life, with the survival and continuity of Jewish life and values. Personally, I was involved in very many research projects of, of what eventually became uh, of, an, of a very Im important nature to Israel. And I must again emphasize, I never felt that I was sacrificing something or that I was doing something which uh, was that, that I was expecting somebody, somebody to thank me for whatever I did. Definitely not. It was my own choice as such to participate, to work very hard, sometimes without reward. And I might say that in research, one very often talks about the successes, but definitely there are very many failures in research. And uh, you go home uh, with a feeling that you've worked for an entire week and nothing has come out of it. My husband's world of microelectronics and my world, my world, they are so completely different. And sometimes I go visiting him it is lab, and I always try to understand what is happening there. And um, it's exciting, but I never understand completely what is happening <laughs> in those circuits and jukes and so on. At the beginning, uh, when we were small, we didn't uh, appreciate our father so much. As, as the time we grow older, we learn and, and understand our father much more. And he influenced our life in many ways. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotzav, v'tziva alanu l'adlik neashit shabbat. Shabbat shalom. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh ha-shabbat. Yitzhak Yidron's life at Technion has not ended. He was part of a unique collective human resource which continues on in full force. His ideas, his work, his values are being carried forward by such colleagues as his chief assistant, Professor Yael Nemirovsky, and a new generation of students. Professor Kidron was deeply aware of the importance of that kind of continuity to the work of the Technion and to the greater good of the nation. I think it is important and it is the responsibility of leaders in technology, engineering and science to take upon themselves the responsibility again to to carry further a certain field. Nobody is going to tell us what we ought to do. We are supposed to set the guidelines, to set the standards, to set examples as such, to promote a younger generation to follow us, do better than we do, actually. Definitely better. And I, I would say I, I would express great joy at finding a graduate student who is more talented and he's more dedicated and, and is much better than me are, so I can leave this place with a sense of security that others are following. As your industry becomes more um, um, sophisticated, it needs higher uh, trained and better trained at various levels of people. In addition to this, of course, what you need are facilities in order to design, test uh, such devices and also to fabricate it. I feel personally that a person who is very talented and lives in Israel, he owes more to his people than, an, than a normal person. 
that there is some sort of a natural obligation towards one's culture, one's pe the, the people, and, and more so in terms of responsibility. I feel that the scientific community in Israel must carry a very great responsibility to its country here. We have to survive here. We have to live in this part of the world. We owe much to our people. of the Technion family, the teachers and students pursuing knowledge, invention, and discovery, the graduates in industry seeking higher levels of achievement, and the men and women of the American Technion Society, along with Technion societies the world over, are moving together toward the future, pursuing Technion's historic goals to sustain and enhance the quality, productivity, independence and security of the free state and people of Israel. The American Technion Society has been instrumental and extremely helpful in providing support to the Technion to allow it to fulfill its functions um, in Israel. Uh, I do not know whether the figures which I will eventually quote, are precise to the second fraction. But if I'm not mistaken, five years ago, the government of Israel provided up to close to 75% uh, of the running budget of the Technion. Whereas due to financial and economic limitations, the government presently only funds approximately 56% of our running budget, and I'm not even taking into consideration the development uh, project as such. Now, that means that the Technion as a whole must approach the various societies abroad to ask them to assist them in covering the expenses related to education, technological education, engineering, scientific education in Israel. The American Technion Society as such provides the largest fraction of all the funds that are eventually brought to Israel. And mind you, I'm fully convinced that the American Technion Society will have to continue in the future to participate and even increase its participation. Now, I think, again, if you think very carefully about this, this is not a matter of philanthropy. This is a matter, again, whether or not the members of the American Technion Society and its, their contributors, to what extent they are and they feel that they are part in the building phase of the State of Israel. If they feel in that manner, it again becomes to a certain extent, their obligation to participate in that process.